Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video we're going to look at the Vexlar 9 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So one of the things I really like about this battery is a fuse holder. So these come with this little uh, doodad here on the positive terminal. Um, I think it's, it's really cool. Um, and you can't really find these anywhere else other than their website as far as I know. Um, but it has a 10 10 amp max draw um, it's just a cool little feature on their on their battery I, I really like that uh, these batteries retail on their website for 80 bucks um, that comes to eight dollars and78 cents an amp hour um, so not the not the cheapest one out there but not the most expensive one either um, they recommend that you charge it with their charger which is the same charger they use for their seal but acid batteries which is the v410 charger and this is a one amp charger uh it says 13 and a half volts let's let's get the meter out and take a look at that they do have like this barrel plug-in style connector i chopped that off and put these um terminals on just because i don't i don't own a bexlar uh fish finder so it wasn't really useful for me. So yeah, 13.68, so 13.7 on that sealed lead acid uh, charger. It's a one amp, so if this is completely dead, you're looking at a nine amp or a nine hour charge time with that. So let's get this guy weighed up. I already charged it up too, so we'll we'll wear we'll put it on the capacity tester. So this guy weighs in at two pounds thirteen ounces. You know what? I got just a quick story. I've got this uh, sixteen-year-old kid that's working for me assembling, and uh, he had a problem with one of his uh, he's testing lights or something. You know, we test lights out in the shop, and and uh, he had sealed lead acid battery and a, a lithium battery in front of him. And he was using the sealed lead acid battery to test. And I said, oh, well, maybe this battery just died. And he picked both batteries up. He's like, no, it's it's full. It's heavier. So we, we got a pretty good laugh out of that. So we are going to get this guy on the capacity tester. I already have it all charged up. This is a nine amp hour battery, so we are gonna discharge at a rate of 0.2 C. 0.2 C on this battery comes out to 1.8 amps. So that's what we'll discharge at. Um, I have a prediction this battery will probably test high on the capacity side. Reason being is they're using a sealed lead acid charger. <clears throat> to charge this thing and they're rating it for nine amp hours so I have a theory that if you were to actually use a lithium charger um, and fully charge those batteries because those or those cells those cells are supposed to be uh, fully charged at 3.6 volts times that by four you're looking at 14.4 volts you're not yet you don't get 14.4 volts with that charger you get 13.6 so uh, probably comes out to about 3.3 somewhere in that area with these cells so you're not fully charging these lithium let's get to discharging this guy so we are going to go 1.8 amps we're going we're running so I will check in with you guys uh, after this thing dies and then we'll tear it apart stay tuned Hey guys, this thing just finished up, so pretty, pretty happy with the results here. Uh, 11.356 amp hours for a 9 amp hour battery. Um, pretty cool, it, it ran that high, so I know what you guys want. We are, oh, you know what, let me put a little bit of charge on it. I forgot to do the uh, um, short circuit protection test, so uh, stick around, I'm going to put a little bit of charge on it. We're going to try to short it out and see what happens. 
okay we have a little bit of a charge on here um so this thing has a three amp fuse and i think that will probably end up blowing so i'm going to just bypass that put that up and we're looking for basically we don't want to see um and we might see a little bit of rise on this uh, current here this is an amp meter but we want to pretty much see it zeros we want to see this thing um activate short circuit protection which i assume it has um but we'll, let's find out oh wow yeah Ooh. fuse blue so i hit it right on the uh terminal here and that knocked it off but came up here at fuse and, and that blew right away so pass pass there i've got more fuses so i'll grab another fuse and well i guess i don't really need one because we're gonna avoid the warranty tear it apart so let's do it let's crack her open let's avoid the warranty here we go hey before we crack this guy open do me a favor if you have a battery you want me to test let me know down in the comments. Uh, let me know what kind of battery you want me to test um, and break open and give you my opinion on. And if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button. Helps us out. It's like they used cell cone to glue it together. I think I got her here. So far guys, this looks identical to the Markham 10 amp hour battery. But look at this, it's got the same silicone on one side of the battery, it's got that spacer. Um, it didn't have this, it wasn't sealed with silicone like this one was. Uh, the wires are a little small, but Vexar says it's for their there are fish finders which they don't really draw a whole lot of power so if you're just using it with their fish finder that'd probably be okay i think i've got a theory already and i think this they're both getting their batteries marco man vex are getting their batteries from the same supplier just by the how this pack looks already so let's uh let's dig into it and we'll get it figured out I'm gonna have to cut into it. It's got some adhesive on the bottom, so time to do some surgery. Got her. Some little dab of silicone on the bottom. Let's hold it up. Cut this plastic off. Kind of feels like the BMS is on top. So definitely want to avoid that. Okay, so let me get my mess here cleaned up and then we'll go over the battery here. This is Milo, shop cat. All right, guys. <clears throat> Looking at this pack here, I went and I haven't unwrapped it or anything. It just like looks an awful like a lot like that Markham 10 amp hour pack. So I went and grabbed the Markham 10 amp hour. And so far they are almost identical. Almost. 
so far. Um, they got capped on tape around here. They got the fish paper on both sides. I don't remember if this had, if this was wrapped in fish tape like this is. Um, I think it was, but I'm not 100% sure. I do see a thermometer on the right side, which corresponds with the Markham thermometer, the cells, they are IFR, IFR 26650s, pretty darn similar. Um, this one says Lithium Valley. Lithium Valley is a Chinese manufacturing company, lithium manufacturing company. Um, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of companies are get their batteries through them. It certainly appears as Markham's and Vexlar's. Uh, they have a little bit different BMS, but as far as build quality, I mean it's it's almost identical. Even the the part number on the BMS is almost identical TDT4S8323 Markham has 8323A so looking at these cells here um, these Vexlar cells are 3300 milliamp hour cells where the Markham is 3600 milliamp hour so it, you're basically looking at 3.3 amp hours versus 3.6 amp hours um, and how this works is these three cells are in parallel so you take 3.3 times it by 3 and you have 9.9 .9 amp hours so you take this cell we're counting this as one cell those three cells in parallel counting that as one cell this is another cell these two are in series these two are in series with each other and then this one and this one are in series so you get four uh, cells in series, and that's how you increase your uh, voltage, keep your capacity the same. So uh, that's where we're getting our 12 volts, 9.9 uh, .9 amp hour battery. Now, with that said, the thing I like about what Vexlar did is they didn't do what... Um, some of the other battery companies, most notably Dakota Lithium, their 7 amp hour battery, they don't even have cells in there that's rated for 7 amp hours. If you haven't seen that video, check it out right here. I uh, did a, a tear down that, on that one. Um, but what I like about this battery is they were so close, 9.9 .9 amp hours. Um, and they had enough integrity to say it's not a 10 amp hour battery. We're going to call it a 9 amp hour battery, so I like that in the company. So one thing I did see and get excited about was that temperature probe. But it was located in the same place as the Markham battery. Kind of. This one wasn't taped to the cells. Markham battery was taped to the cells. This one is tucked. Yeah, it's tucked up underneath the BMS, which is, eh. I don't care for that because your BMS is going to put off heat. And you really want those kind of more in between cells. And, and another thing I don't like about this battery is these, there's no separation between these series cells. So the cases here have different potentials as far as they're, it's negative on the case, but you have. You have three and a half volts on one side, and you got 14 volts or 13 and a half in this case over here. So you have a, a 10 volt difference. And if if this plastic shrink wrap were to fail, you know you're going to be shorting those batteries together. And I just absolutely hate that. I don't know why battery companies don't separate these cells that are in series. Simple thing to do. This fish paper is cheap. Throw it between there. Done. 
So, um, another thing I really, really harp on battery companies, and this is all battery companies, I, every one. Um, there's only been one battery company that I've so far tore down that had this, and it was like the worst battery <laughs> I've tore apart. And just because like the cell holders in it were melting, I mean they were melting, but it had low, uh, low temperature charging, had a low temperature charging protection circuit, which is very important when you're using the battery, in my opinion, when you're using the battery in an ice fishing environment. So you're coming off the lake, uh, Joe Blow Ice Fisherman goes to his garage, plugs in his, his Vexlar plugs in his uh, Markham whatever fish finder in his garage and goes on in well we know damn well those cells are not above freezing we don't want to charge a battery lithium battery when it's below freezing because you damage those cells about ability to retain charge what a battery company can do is they can take these temperature probes and program the BMS to not allow it to accept that charge um, super should be a super simple easy fix and like they're not doing it it drives me nuts so we're gonna test the Vexlar one I doubt it works we're gonna give them a, a good try here so right now we're charging you can see red light on the on the charger there And nothing so no big surprise there um, wish these ice fishing companies would would get that get that going so concluding thoughts with this battery it's gonna be pretty much exactly the same as uh, the Markham I wish the wires were a little bit thicker um, I like that the BMS is on top it's got a lot of heat dissipation. I do not like that there is no separation between your different series cells. I do like that the balance leads are just soldered tin or uh, nickel strips. Um, you don't have wires crisscrossing all over the place. So in my book, that's a good thing. So yeah, overall, uh, not a bad battery but not a it's not up there it's not a great battery it's not what i want to see i would like to see the low temperature charging protection circuit in here i would like to see the separation between the series cells yeah those two things would be huge in my book thanks for watching guys make sure you hit that thumbs up button hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and uh make sure you check out these other videos i got a few other ones where I break down some batteries. So and if you have any battery suggestions, make sure to let me know. I'm going to try to do this about uh, once a week. So every Sunday, I'm going to come out with a video with a battery teardown. Thanks for watching.